In this video, we're going to look at a couple of examples of Turing machines to try and give you an idea of what they look like. In our first example, our goal is to create a Turing machine that recognizes this language. It's the language of 0 followed by 0 or more 1s followed by a final 0. This language is uh, regular uh, and so it's a quite a simple language and we don't really need a f the full power of a Turing machine to recognize this language but it will serve as a nice short example of what a Turing machine looks like. So let's look at what we see. We see a number of states including the initial state A and our accept and reject states. We always have exactly one initial, one accept, and one reject state. And out of each one of these states, we see a transition or an edge that's labeled with one of these symbols 0 or 1. Uh, we also have edges that are labeled with blanks. So let's try and see how this thing works. Uh, from the initial state, if we see an, a 0, we go to state B. Then if we see a 1, we stay in state B. We can see 0 or more ones and we just take this transition over and over. Also when we see our zero we replace it with an X and for each one we replace that with a Y and we move right so we are moving right through the input and when we see our final zero we replace that with an X and move right into state C. Well there better be no more zeros after that in other words the next thing ought to be a blank and if it is we go to our accept state and immediately halt execution. In all other cases we go to the reject state. So we can see this thing is deterministic. On a zero we have some place to go from each state um, and on a one we have some place to go from A, from B, and from C and on a blank we have some place to go from A, B, and C mostly we go to the reject state. If we start off with an initial one or we fail to see that last zero we go to the reject or after seeing that last zero if there are more ones or zeros we can reject. And in this case we're always moving right we never back up so we don't see any examples of a left move. So is this thing deterministic? Well yes on zero, on one, and on blank there's some place to go. Now actually we're writing X's and Y's as well on this. So our alphabet contains not only zeros and ones but X's and Y's and to be entirely correct I ought to have put transitions for X and Y. I don't know why I overwrote these things with uh, X, I overwrote the zeros with uh, X's and overwrote the, y, the ones with Y's. There's no particular reason for doing this in this computation other than to provide an example of how we can update the tape. So uh, it is deterministic there will never be any choices. Now also it's oftentimes the case that we have a lot of edges like this going into the reject state and so we can just assume that if an edge is missing then it, it leads to the reject state. So if we are executing our Turing machine and we're in some state and we find a character and there's no edge leading out that's labeled with that input symbol, with that tape symbol, then we assume there's an implicit edge to the reject state. So getting stuck is effectively the same as rejecting. Okay? The looping stuff occurs when we uh, are continuously taking transitions and going around between from state to state to state. Uh, reject occurs when we hit the reject state or alternatively we can say that uh, if we come to a state and there's no transition that is legal to take then we are implicitly going to the reject state and the computation halts with a reject. In our next example we want to look at this language 0 to the n, 1 to the n so our input alphabet is clearly zeros and ones and we have an equal number of zeros and followed by an equal number of ones. 
So uh, here's the algorithm, uh, and, but I think it'll be clearer uh, instead of uh, trying to describe the algorithm to just show how to execute the algorithm. So we begin, here's a tape with a particular input on it, and it's a legal input, so we ought to end up in the accept state. And we start with our head right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to modify the first tape cell and override it to an X. So I'll just write it down here like that. And then we're going to move to the right past a bunch of zeros until we get to a 1. And then we're going to modify that cell to a Y. And then we're going to start moving back to the left over zeros until we hit an X. And then we're going to take a step to the right and we're going to see a zero there. And so we're going to modify that to an X. And again, we've got this little uh, looping structure here where we move, move past zeros. We have to move past any ones we've made so far. When we get to the next one, we erase it and write a Y and then move back over Y's and over zeros until we hit an X. And then we move right one square. And if there's still more zeros left, we overwrite that with an X. And then move right past the zeros and the Y's to a 1. And we change that to a Y. And then we move back past the Y's. And if we hit an X, we know we're done. But if there's still one more zero, we change it to an X. And then we move past any zeros, of which there are none at this point. And we move past the Y's to the next one that we encounter. We better find at least one of these. We better not hit a blank. But if we hit a 1, then we cross it out. And then at this point, we can scan back, check that there are no more zeros, and then check to make sure that there are no more 1's. And at that point, we can accept. So by accepting, we say, yes, this string is in the language. Reject is saying, no, this is not in the language. So here's the algorithm expressed in pseudocode. Change a 0 to an x. Move right to the first 1. If we can't find 1, then we reject. Change that 1 into a y. And then move left um, to the leftmost 0. And then repeat until we have no more zeros. And then make sure we have no more 1's either. So as we're going through this computation on a particular input like I sh showed before, the tape will change. And so here we have a history of the tape. Each line shows a particular configuration of the tape. And uh, I've left out a bunch of moves here. We don't see the actual moves in the he tape head positions, but we see how the tape is changing. And in this case, note that our tape alphabet contains two different kinds of characters. Characters that are input characters, 0 and 1, and then additional characters that we're using during the computation, like X and Y. And finally, we have our blank. So we'll, when we get more precise and talk about our tape alphabet as opposed to our input alphabet, we'll uh, make this distinction between input symbols and additional symbols that we use during the computation. Here is a Turing machine that I claim will perform that computation the way we've just described it. We have our initial state. We have an accept state. Here, we scan our first 0 and turn it into an x and move to the right. Here, in this cycle, we skip past zeros without modifying them. And we skip past y's without modifying them, always moving to the right, until we hit a 1, in which case we turn it into a y and then move back to the left. Here, we scan past the y's and then past the zeros, moving to the left until we hit an x. We don't modify the x, but we move to the right, and we repeat. Notice that when we see a 0, when we start moving to the right, past the zeros and the y's, looking for a 1, if we don't find a 1 but hit a blank instead, then there's no transition labeled blank 
coming out of state B. So implicitly, that's a rejection. We go to the reject state. Um, finally, when we go back to A looking for another zero, if we don't have any zeros, then um, we only see x's followed by y's, then we scan past the y's to the right, and here we have a cycle moving right, and we had better hit a blank. If we hit a 1, if there's still 1's that remain, or zeros uh, after that, for some reason, that could happen too, um, then we would go to the reject state which is implicitly assumed to exist but is not shown in this diagram. And here we have a transition um, that shows that we also accept the empty string. We start in the initial state and if the first thing we see is a blank then there are no zeros and ones and we can go immediately to the accept state. Now is this machine correct? Does it work? Well, uh, it might contain bugs. So it's like a program in those ways. Okay? Turing machines model computers, and in, more precisely, each Turing machine models a program or a function. And in this way, the Turing machines are similar to computer programs. Maybe it contains a bug. Maybe it's not correct. Um, but these are questions you ask about any program.